This will be the second installment um, in my explanation of what makes a muscle grow. How does a muscle grow? Um, we, we covered the first, uh, the first one was mostly about the, the stimulus to sort of insult the muscle so that it uh, feels the need to, to respond by adapting. I want to continue that part of it a little deeper, the stimulus part. I want to, uh, I want to get to uh, a particular part of the stimulus that's, that's really, really important, and that, that's the idea of tension. Now, we can interpret tension different ways. Uh, the tension that, that causes the most muscle growth uh, is the longitudinal tension from where a muscle originates and where it inserts. The tension along it as it's trying to contract to, to do its thing and move its levers, the bones, around. That, that tension that's produced along the muscle, not inside the muscle. There's, there's, a, there's a, a tension you can feel when you, when you flex a muscle and make it, and make it hard. And, and that creates tension by contraction too. But that, that's sort of an overlapping of the actin and myosin, which are parts of the muscle that, that start like this. And then as the ends are brought together, they, they kind of overlap and become uh, harder. And they, they build up internal tension. And I don't want you to, con that's a super, super valuable um, thing to know about and to, to uh, facilitate in your training. But it's not what I want to talk about now. It's a different kind of tension. So the kind of tension, let's be clear, the kind of tension that I'm speaking of to go with this idea that this, this is really where the stimulus comes from. You know, how do we insult the muscle? Well, we insult it by asking it to create a lot of tension. That high tension along the axis, not inside the muscle, but along the axis, the pulling tension as it's trying to, to work, is a huge generator for growth. And so you, you know what that feels like. You know, you've had a heavy weight in your hands and tried to move it. And so that, that if you can imagine the muscle, and here's where I'll take a little sidetrack and say, you, you really should know some anatomy if you want to really take this to, to any really advanced level knowing where the muscles are and being able to visualize that longitudinal tension would be super helpful right now. Let's just take the bicep as our example. It, it originates up here and it inserts down, down here. And it, it basically just gets shorter. It doesn't have any fancy. Uh, it's a fusiform muscle, meaning that all the fibers run kind of straight up and down from end to end. There's no fancy uh, <laughs> configurations going on there. So it's easy to understand. So when I'm talking about the longitudinal tension, I'm talking about the tension that, that, that's going against this uh, bicep contracting motion. The, the tension that's pulling your hand away, but that's transferred and felt in the muscle as a pull, as a longitudinal um, force. And your muscles are producing force in, in opposition to that to make the muscle contract and to make the bone move. So the weight is creating a force that's trying to move the, uh, the bone open. And your muscle's creating a force that's trying to pull the bone, your forearm, closed. And those are oppositional forces. And you can feel that, um, you can feel that pressure uh, building up. And I just don't want to confuse it with the pressure inside the muscle as it, as it tightens. So imagine the muscle being pulled on from end to end and all the way in between. That's the tension that you need to get up as high as you can. That's the tension that I'm talking about when I say, what makes a muscle grow? Well, stimulation. What kind of stimulation? Tension.
This is the tension we're talking about. This is what we want to get to. So one way to do that, of course, is to add more weight um, to, to, to resist against. But the weight itself isn't really producing the tension. It's the effort to overcome the long positioning of the muscle when, when the weight's hanging down in your arm and, and overcoming that and shortening the muscle. So all this really happens irregardless, not, that's, that's not the word, regardless of the, the tool that you use to create the tension. And what I mean by that, what I want to say that's important about that is that you could have a 25 pound dumbbell in your hand and that would create a force that wants to pull the bicep open. And you would create the force that wants to close the bicep down and that would create the tension we're talking about. But so would a spring or a rubber band or a sack of sand or somebody else pulling the other way against you or you pulling against yourself and providing that uh, resistance. So whatever, I want to make it clear that you can use all sorts of gizmos, gadgets, and whatnot to create the opposing force that your muscles are trying to w overcome so that they can contract and overlap from end to end. That end-to-end -end tension can be created by anything. It doesn't have to be weights. It doesn't have to be rubber bands or a spring or, or, or anything. It, it can be any form of resistance that you can think of um, as long as it provides the force along the longitudinal axis. It's what we want. So that, that should be encouraging to you that all you need to do is find ways to build up more and more and more tension along the muscle belly and that will, that will grow. That will make the muscle grow. And you can use a variety of things to, uh, to accomplish that. That should be very encouraging that you have lots and lots and lots of options. There is no specifically best tool. The, the answer to that question, what's the best way to create tension in my muscle along the long axis of the, of the muscle belly? The answer to that is whichever method you're going to work the hardest at. Because where the tension really comes from isn't the rubber band or the weight or the stone or the bag of potatoes or the spring, it's coming from your head into your muscle and it's pulling one end of the muscle towards the other end to meet in the center. They go like this, contract, relax, contract, relax. That comes from central drive, that comes from your motor cortex It gets sent down a nerve to the brachial plexus down your arm into your bicep. And it, it, it's, it's willpower, it's choice, it's wherever the seat of the will is that you keep trying to pull and pull and pull against heavier and heavier and heavier weights. That's the progressive part of this. The tension has to be created and the muscle will respond to that tension by getting bigger and stronger. Then you have to increase the tension, you have to, make, you have to pick up a bigger rock or you have to pull the band a little further, or you have to distend the spring farther, or you have to uh, throw the shot put further, or you have to put more weight on the bar. All those, all those ways are ways to continually add tension, add tension, add tension. So that, that's enough of, of, of an explanation for the, the quality of tension and the kind of tension that we have to have. Uh, it's longitudinal tension along the muscle belly. It helps a great deal if you know a little bit of anatomy so you can help visualize this. 
But in the end, it has to come from somewhere in your seat of will, go to your motor cortex, down your brachial plexus, into your bicep, and make that bicep contract. That tension from end to end is where, is where you're gonna grow. So if you're looking for muscle growth, don't look to the weights or a machine or an exercise or a system of exercise or sets or reps. Look for tension, create more and more tension. There's, there's different ways to do it. So be creative, look for tension, and don't, don't rely so much on an exercise or a program or a machine or weights or some sort of external thing to get you to that tension. Do it yourself in your head with willpower. The more tension, the more tension, the more growth. And that's an oversimplification, but we'll get, we'll get more in detail in the next one. So thanks for listening. And uh, if, if you're interested in, <laughs> in, in, you know, I'm going to take this as far as I, as I know and slowly but surely add one thing to the, the concept at a time. So there you have that. I'm adding the, the concept of tension, and um, I hope that that uh, makes it a little clearer than it was after the first one. Thanks for listening.